Hello, everybody. I'm in a happy camp right now. Taylor, I'm going to need you to wake up because we're going to review Psychic Awakening. What were you saying about being a camper? <sighs> we made this joke before, so unfortunately, <laughs> it's not going to be as uh, fresh this time around, but there's a new book out. Yes. It's called Psychic Awakening. I have some very strong words and feelings uh, about it. Uh, but so I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Dill go first on his thoughts, what he likes about the book, what he doesn't like about the book, because you know obviously both our favorite factions are in a Gene Sealer cult, yes. Astro Militarum. Yes. I guess you could argue that as a Gene Sealer cult player, you also get what the Astro Militarum get, because no, that's true. That's a good you know, point. but I like to play pure Gene Sealer cult. I don't like souping them in. Mm -hmm. Um, so go ahead, take us away. You All go right. First. So today, obviously, Psychic Awakening, the Greater Good. Obviously, the Cover Boys. Well, technically, Cover Girl. Not a shout out to that one brand. Uh, not not the biggest fans of their gameplay, even though Imperial Guard just do what they do, but worse. Yeah. Honestly. Honestly, I'll I'd play Tau. I hate Tau, but I'll play them just because of how much I hate this book. My hate for Tau will man or look for this book will manifest into a Tau army. That would make sense because Tau, Tau are the ultimate weebs, and that kind of sounds like an anime story arc right there. Yeah, I guess. So eh, yeah, you never right. know. Yeah, Honestly, I did give a like a quick read through through the Tau stuff, and it actually does do a lot for them. So right. if you are a Tau player, it's really exciting times to just be boosted a little more. Even though the playstyle isn't for me, but you can still do a lot. Is it for you? You oh. play guard. What? You play guard. Yeah, but I don't like all the drone stuff. I think that's a little that okay. Lame. That's for sure lame. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. That's what I don't. De like. Definitely. No, no. That's why I hate them too. Yeah. But there is actually some cool stuff, because if I were to do a Tau army, i definitely, me and Nico both agree, I think we'd both want to do, like, uh, battle suit armies no. that just, you don't want to do that. No, I do a gun line, because I hate, because oh I hate everybody, right, and so Nico, hates me. Nico doesn't get the talk for uh, 10 so minutes. So, three so. reptiles and storm surge for me, please. <laughs> Alright, so, so obviously, Astro Militarum and Tempest's Scions, surprisingly Scions, getting a huge update with stuff. So I guess just... Real quick, it's just, just going to be kind of what we like and we don't like. Not a full review, but what I do love, obviously, the Imperial Guard getting their custom tactics. Yes, you were you were hot for those for a, for a while. Yes, I was I was waiting because obviously Guard is like the faction that like really that's one of the faction that makes so much sense for them to yes. have. And to be fair, there are some good things, but overall, I think it is a bit underwhelming. Definitely. I think they could have done some cooler stuff for the infantry because a lot of them are kind of recycled from like the other. Uh, you know, tactics, so like you have half of Catachans, right. you have half of what uh, like Vestroyans do, half of like what Steel Legion does, and then there's some also cool ones where it's like you always have cover if you're X amount away, and like you won't get to reroll in advance, but honestly, the infantry stuff leaves a lot to be desired. My two favorites, jury rigging repairs, you yes. know, you get to regain the lost wounds at the start of your turn on all your vehicles, depending on how well you roll, so two through four, one wound, a five or a six, D3 wounds. So if you're running a pretty heavy vehicle list, which I tend to do, my favorite tanks in the game are Lehman Russes. So it just helps a lot if your opponent isn't like destroying them every time you shoot at them. Because it is yeah. pretty hard to kill a Lehman Russ. Right. If you focus fire it, it does it does go down a little quicker because they don't have any invuln saves, but that toughness eight is still kind of hard to chew through. Right. And the three up save does help a lot. We did film a bat rep. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to talk about that? We'll just say spoilers now. Yeah, spoilers if you, now. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Yeah, so basically what happened was my tanks kind of took a beating in the first turn. Well, my tank commander took a beating in the first turn, but by the end of turn five, because of the repairs and despite because, you know, if you shoot something and you know you're really not going to kill it and it's just going to repair itself, it's kind of like better to ignore it as the right. game goes on because exactly. you want to kill stuff. The tank commander was left alive on nine wounds at the end of the game and he ended the first turn with three, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Or the second turn after he moved forward. So it's honestly a really good one. And then I paired that up with the better half of Katachan where you get to reroll any of the dice for, or one of the dice for right. it when you shoot random weapons. So that was really cool. The war, um, But my second favorite thing, well actually... The custom traits were going to be my favorite thing, but because they were a little underwhelming, the tank ace thing kind of became my new favorite thing because it's very much like the Tyranids, like, uh, what are they called? Adaptive? Adaptive physiologies. But honestly, they're a lot better. I have more. Oh, definitely. They're <laughs> definitely a lot better. You can do a I lot. I have more words about that. Again, I'm letting, I'm letting Jill go. So you can do a lot for your Lehman Russes. So basically, you give up a Warlord trait or you spend a CP. You can do both to give a Lehman Russ or actually, an, yeah, a Lehman Russ or a tank like it, a tank ace ability, and you can give an artillery vehicle a set of three as well, and a super heavy a set of three as well, and you choose from the list. This artillery ones are super good. There's one where you just yes. basically do max damage every time you Disgusting. shoot. Disgusting. 
there's one where you get to reroll the number of shots for it every time you shoot. So those ones are gross. I don't have any artillery tanks, so if I did, I would definitely be using those. But the Lehman Russ ones, I think, are really cool because you can make some really characterful guys. So you can make one who has like a like a uh, a really good repairman. That's the one I use. So you reduce damage by one for all things that uh, you know damage him. Yes. There's one where you can just add two to uh, add one to your save, effectively giving Lehman Russ is a two plus save. Mm -hmm. And there's another one where you can. Um, Increase the AP of your weapons on the Lehman Russ. So, AP minus three, Hammer of Sundrance. Yeah, it's very, very good. Disgusting. So, there's a lot of cool things you can do with the tank cases. And I think overall, really, just with the guard stuff, it's just like the level of customization just increases. And that's what I love in this hobby. And then, obviously, you can get a good amount of new stratagems such as help their shooting. A lot of them are actually very unit specific. Yes. So, you know, those are kind of hit or miss just depending on what units you have in your army. But there's some very, very good ones. Like, my favorite one is, okay, from a gameplay perspective, would probably be the Relentless one, where basically you get to shoot at your top profile no matter oh, what. Yeah. That's but my great. favorite ones for just, like, the way I play, and I just think they're so funny, is basically Duty Eternal for Armored Sentinels. Yeah. <laughs> you get to half the damage, yeah. which is just so dumb. <laughs> and then uh, the one where you get to add two to the hit rolls of an Armored or Scout Sentinel on the first turn. Yeah, that's fine. I didn't do that in the bat rep because I thought I was going to be a little uh, hungrier for CP, but I wasn't, so I should have done it. And you only get to do it in the first turn. Yeah. So if you can get a cheeky last cannon shot off hitting on a 2+, plus, which is pretty funny. You're just going to miss anyways. <laughs> Is that how it always goes? Yeah, and you don't, so you don't get any psychic powers or warlord traits or anything for them, but the big winners, the scions, you get new warlord traits, new Sorry. relics, and new, um, what are they called? Just like, oh, scion doctrines. Yeah. Basically, just they're, they're their own army now, basically. Yeah, and there's some really disgusting stuff that you can do. There's one tactic where the whole, all your unit, it's basically the regiment tactic for the scions. There's one where just all their weapons are an extra AP. Yeah, that's... Re it's crazy. That's, that's doctrines across everything. Exactly. And, and I'm just like, why? And there's no restrictions. Like, right? why? It's so crazy. It's so, not infantry. So Torix missile launchers are minus three now. Yeah. So it's so good. Are, are, are the Flyers... Do they have the science? No, because they're Aeronauta and Curialis. So okay, gotcha. Yeah, so they don't. So there's that. But still, minus three on your hotshot last guns. Yeah. But the only, the, the only problem with that is... Hotshot last guns do struggle to be in rapid fire when you drop down. Yes. So you kind of, it's kind of a trade off because there's another tactic where you just add um, six inches to your hotshot weapon or all your rapid fire weapons. So now when they drop in, they'll actually be in rapid fire distance. Yeah. Because it's pretty hard to be in that. So there's just a ton of, and then you get a whole bunch of new Scion stratagems. So overall, you guys can tell I'm pretty happy with the Imperial Guard stuff. Obviously, I'm not, I don't really care too, too much about how competitive everything is, but I do just wish that, like, the custom tactics, at least for the infantry, I think the vehicle ones are really cool. There's obviously, like, some auto-take type of stuff, but I just wish the infantry stuff was just a little more viable, because they kind of tried to make it so there's some combat stuff and some stuff to, like, make them a little more survivable, but they're really not something you would take. Yeah. And the combat stuff, you could just do that better with Katachan, and I think the Katachan one represents that better. Because you're going to choose those two, like, basically where it's you. On a hit roll of six, you get another hit. Yeah. And then there's one where, like, I think you get, uh, not extra attacks, but, oh, your close combat attacks are an extra AP when you roll a six if you're within an officer. So there's just, like, a ton of hoops to, like, yeah. get that one off. So yeah. it's a little rough. <laughs> but, honestly, overall, I'm just happy with the, um, kind of the direction they're going with the rules. I do enjoy them. But I do know that Nico is not too happy with the Gene Stealer Cold stuff. I don't and, you know, he's been, uh, he's been on the internet, interwebs, and he <sighs> says, he says the people aren't happy either. I have. So you, the people, do you agree with him? Let us see. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're a Gene Steeler cult player, definitely not. Because, you know, I have a, I have a little, you know, I have a, I have a say in the guard stuff too, because I'm, I play Cadians, you know, they're dirty power gamer. You know, dirty, dirty um, but basically what I can gather from, uh, the guard stuff is that, and I think just the book in general. Again, we're not speaking on Tau because we don't know how, like, how, like, uh, we don't play Tau. No. We, so we, we can't speak up Tau. So if you're Tau watching this, we apologize. This is mostly going to be Astronaut Terminal Gene Stealer Cult. Mm -hmm. One thing that, like, I really just dislike is that, like, the tank cases and the signature systems, while they are cool, I thought that was, like, a unique rule that Nids were going to get to, like, help them, like, make up for, like, them being terrible. But, like, they, but then they're like, oh, let's just give it to everyone. It's not everybody. Which, right? like, yeah, it's not, not everyone, to, to guard and tower. So I'm just kind of like, <laughs> oh, why'd you do that? It's a little less special for Nids, but... Yeah. 
Um, my big problem, uh, with the guard at least, is that, and cult too, this is before, uh, this is just a precursor, is that they don't, it doesn't change how you play the game. Like, there's not enough in there for somebody who, like, uh, like your friend Jonathan, right? He plays all infantry, all heavy weapons. Again, not optimal, but, you know, we're just people having fun. Mm -hmm. all, uh, all heavy weapon teams, like, hundreds of bodies just flooding the board. And this book really doesn't do anything for him. Yeah, that's fair. Like, there, obviously there's stuff to help him, but it, I, I don't like that it just... Um, I don't like that I can't play the game in a different way. Because mm -hmm. going to Gene Steeler Cult, before I even get into all, all the other stuff, taking the custom traits, the best, like, combo... Like, some of them make no sense. Mm -hmm. Like, zero sense. Um, they're just worse versions of what's in the book. And then you lose everything on top of that, so they're just not worth taking. Because, um, you know, they're, they're not fun. Yeah, they have the same problem that Tyranids have. If you don't. With, in the Psychic Awakening. Right. right. Yeah. Well, actually, I will say, the Tyranids, at least, there was a, a lot of uh, a lot of the traits. Oh, so by, you could at okay, least, okay. they weren't, like, viable, but at least you could, like, have fun with them. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, minus one of my Psychic Talents, that's cool, I'll take 90 Hormone Gods. Mm -hmm. Not the best, but, like, at least when my Hormone Gods, like, get there, mm -hmm. I can see that on the table mm -hmm. coming to fruition. Colt you're just never gonna see there's one good combo which i will try soon enough and it's if you ignore you ignore moving and shooting heavy weapons okay. so bladed cog and then you re-roll hits for your your heavy mining weapons oh okay which like yes that's good but it doesn't change how a bladed cog list would play mm. and then you lose the bladed cogs and then i lose i lose the bladed cog stuff on top of that that's so that's that's the big issue there um so that's what I don't like, because I was gonna say at least the Nids and the and the Eldar, while they didn't obviously get rules to like help them in the meta, because we don't really care about that too much. Mm -hmm. At least they got stuff to mix it up a bit. Mm -hmm. At least I could see some stuff I'm like, oh, that, that's a cool combo. I'll try that out. Well, it makes your Wraith army like actually something that yes. you feel a difference on the table. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, I feel you. Exactly. Using using Wraiths certainly, because like actually now I don't, because I, I did like Ulthway. For sure, but now I just I only use the custom one because you know that's how my army's built. Mm -hmm. So at least that's fun. Cult, there's none of that. Yeah, like, and it's just. Let me say something. I'm the least favorite child in my family. And that book, if you're a Dean Slayer cult player, that's what it feels like. <laughs> it's just, it's just so like. Why even put out the rules? Oh, you know, because it's like hot take, hot take. There obviously, yeah, there's some stuff that's good and helps, but like, who's like writing the rules and why? And I want to know why is it that like, Colt was like, Colt was obviously a tournament army for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And I don't think that was because they were, um, well, they, they were certainly good, mm -hmm. but I think that it's mostly because they appeal to how ITC players played, mm -hmm. which is a lot of board control and a lot of flexibility, mm -hmm. which is you know what you uh, need. And if you could uh, maneuver that army um, with like really great precision, you'll usually come out on top. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that most of us are not that. True. A majority of people are not that. What I wanted out of this book, I didn't want cult to like be like on the top tables again. Mm -hmm. I just wanted something to uh, mix up how how I played. New ways to play. New ways to play. That's because sure. the thing with cult is I didn't play them for uh, I don't know maybe like three or four months in the latter half of 2019. Is that the year? Yeah, 2019. Because I just found them too, like, sweaty. Like, I, I love playing Cult, but, like, I didn't like that I was basically trying super hard every game. It's hard, though. It's hard. Exactly. Yeah, I get like, to win. Because, like, I want to win, but, like, I don't want to, like, think that much. Yeah, no. So what I wanted was just something that, um, something that essentially made it so that I could play the game and have fun without, like, trying super hard. And to be fair to Nico, I don't want people to misconstrue like what he just said. It's like that he doesn't want to try to win. Like he doesn't. He wants to. I want to win. He wants like, to win. You know, for but sure. it's just like it kind of gets tiring when you play an army that you have to think about so many things all yeah. the time just to have a chance. Right. Exactly. Because they're so they're they're the classic like glass cannon type. Yeah. Of, they're like dark Eldar. That, right. That, that that's the thing because like you I, you either try really hard and you have a chance and you come out on top mm -hmm. if you pilot them correctly, or you just get wrecked. There's, there's little margin for error. Exactly. And, and like obviously getting wrecked isn't that fun, so I'm going to try really hard. Mm -hmm. But it, it was just like it was just tiring, and I think that's why I didn't play Cult. What I wanted out of this book was, was 
not to like plug our weaknesses, but I think they should have just made our shooting a little better, mm -hmm. made the trucks better, which they really couldn't do. Yeah, that's a good Because point. our vehicles don't get cult traits, and neither do Gene Steelers, mm -hmm. which at the time of the Codex coming out, I would have been like, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. But in with the new Marine book, there's really no reason that Gene agree, Steelers and um, the thing shouldn't get the cult traits. Like, I just feel like so little effort was put into the Gene Steeler cult side of things. Like my birthday's growing up. But no, I'm just kidding. Um, but because it's like, there's one, there's one psychic power, right? Mm. Or no, sorry, not psychic power. We did get any psychic powers, which was nice. Um, but there's okay. I just want to interject with one thing because I get where Nico's coming from. Because this would bother me so much too. It's like I don't understand why. I get it to like just. I, I don't know. I don't get it because like. With Psychic Awakening, it seems like a lot of factions are getting custom traits, right? Yes. So you want to be able to build your own thing. But I don't know why they also, they're going to uh, do a whole new Psychic Tree, but it's only like specific yes. to cults or uh, right. high, what are they, high fleets? The cult creeds. I wish they would just give another Psychic Tree. If you're going to give like Psychic Powers to a faction in Psychic Awakening, just give them a new tree that yes. you can choose from. Exactly. And just put them all in the same tree, so right. at least when you're like choosing, you can only choose you know, right. one from each tree. Yeah. So it's still fair, but it's like then people can, all types of players can use them. Right. And then there's just more custom, like custom, I just, I, it, yeah. it makes me like, if I wanted to play Gene Slayer Cold War Tyranny, just be like, oh, now I only get to use you have to play it so like a very specific way. Yeah, and or, just, you, or you just don't use the new stuff. Yeah, because so it's kind of lame. Yeah, they did the same thing with the Tyranids. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. as, I, like, and what I like, I totally agree with that for sure mm -hmm. because it's just very like just poor game design with the custom traits because one of uh, just for an example, one of them is you get plus one to advance and charge in the first turn, and that's it. What cult army is advancing and charging in the first turn? Like, it, it's done after that. See, Cult of the Formed Emperor, that's the first half of it. But Cult of the Formed Emperor also gets that if you come out of Deep Strike, and that's where it helps. Why don't they just do that one? I, I don't know. <laughs> that's so funny. And then, and then another thing is they also, like, there's just, it's just, there's so many, like, limits on the cult that Marines don't have. It mm -hmm. just feels very unfair. No, I get For that. lack of a better word. Yeah. Like, just for more, like, just, in my opinion, bad design choices. There's one that lets you reroll once for psychic tests. Mm -hmm. We have two psychers. One's the Magus, one's the Patriarch. The Patriarch is a gene stealer, so he doesn't get that. So the Magus can reroll once for a psychic oh, yeah, test. Yeah, that was I'm, you're also restricted to having one per detachment. So three models. So three models three can yeah could benefit from <laughs> one half of your tactic. Yeah, and that's if you're like playing gaming. Because like I like to play it where like there's like one of each character, yeah, yeah. like they're the true heroes of the cult. Mm -hmm. So if I took that one, I'd have one guy. Yeah, that's pretty benefiting. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, I get it. That's, that makes sense. And, like, it's just little stuff like that that makes it, like, very obvious that Games Workshop just, like, did not care about the cult at all. I think it was... I think it's because they did do well in the tournament scene, mm -hmm. which I totally disagree with. I don't think they should be balancing this game based on the tournament scene, in my opinion. Because, like, here's the thing, right? When the Codex is raw coming out, at least it's, like, you know, they're just, like, mm -hmm. coming out and they're just... There's that power game, so it's like, oh, I'm so excited. Mine come out, or mine comes out for the most part, of yep. course. Don't want to talk about Necrons. <laughs> but um, at least, like, your book comes out, oh, like, I'm the new hot stuff. Mm. Like, that's nice. You can sit on top for a little bit. With Psychic Awakening, it's like, for Nids and Cult, it's like, this book comes out, and like, like what? Because not, we're not going to get rules for, like, a really long time. So while everybody else is getting a lot of help, like, we're just... Yeah, you're kind of banking on this being like not the stopgap between you and your right, codex. Right, exactly. And it kind of sucks when it's like underwhelming. So I, I yes. get that. And, that, and you kind of felt the brunt of it twice. Oh, so yeah. Because like, kind of okay, I will, I'm like, honestly, I would love what the Nids got for what, for what the cult got. Because at least the Nids got new relics, they got new uh, psychic powers, and they had a lot of like ways to play it. Did the cult get relics? No. They got new stratagems, though. We did get new stratagems. Are those two? Yeah. There's some that are good, but it's also like some of them are like why. Mm. Uh, well, okay, I won't say that. The stratagems are decent. Okay. But the problem, like I don't know. I think GW just shot themselves in the foot not giving the vehicles cult traits because I feel like that's the one thing people didn't take was the vehicles. Yeah. The mine. It, it doesn't make sense because like vehicles. the equivalent to them in the in the universe is like guard and then the guards like, right. gets the trait. Exactly. I, I, it doesn't really make sense to me like when some armies don't get it and some do. I yeah. Just, you know, it's thinking's kind it's of just weird. frustrating. And I just hope that GW can learn from this because I don't think the book is good at all. I mean, from a cult, yeah, from a cult perspective. perspective. 
No, but I totally, I honestly, I really get what you're saying. Like, I kind of can identify with that too, where it's like, yeah, the guard stuff. Okay, scions, I think don't kind of go against your point where like, the scions totally get a new. If way you to play. yeah, if so, you play play scions, you basically get a new army. Yeah, which dude, is like, like which is sick. And there's so like, many so there's fun. so many cool combo. Like I really think like obviously that mi- extra minus on the AP is really good, but I just think a lot of the stuff in the book for them yeah, is, it's, like, it's, it's a choice. It's, it's like you can you can make an army out of everything, right. and especially because it was such a faction where it's you had limited uh, troop like. Uh, number of units. I really think a full scion army is very viable, and I think it can be really. It's actually something that you can play and have fun with, and not feel like you're just going to get shot off the table yeah. after you deep strike everything. Right, hard. exactly. Because they can hit a lot harder. But I do agree with Nico, where it's like with the guard stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool, but it kind of just makes what they're good at just better. Yeah, and it, it, does, it doesn't, it doesn't open help up, their weakness. Yeah, it doesn't open up new. I don't really care much about the weakness. I just wish it opened up. Well, yeah, I guess it goes to the weaknesses too, but I just wish it opened up new ways to play with the guards so that those at least could be viable to a point where it's like I'm not just shooting myself yeah. in the foot. I, I can bring them to like I can bring them to like a, a like a Saturday night game at the games. Yeah, exactly. You know, because if you're like Jonathan, like if you're Jonathan, you're bringing like 120 infantry. Yeah, you want some cool stuff to happen with like your infantry, but then you get yeah. this book and it's like, oh, well, they you get minus one AP if they're close to a company commander yeah. or something like that yeah, exactly so I guess it's just like it's just not great and just yeah mm-hmm. it's just very very disappointing and it just feels rushed um that I was reading a point that GW should slow down mm-hmm. I totally think they should because they're really just trying to hit all these releases and well, maybe at the very least just like put less factions in each book yeah oh yeah sure. I guess that goes because like because yeah. that's the thing I would rather not have these rules and let them sit so they could come up with a with a better uh, rule set mm-hmm. than what we got because it's just so like it's like insulting almost like I'm not e- like I'm not even joking because like cult's one of the more expensive armies to play acolytes are $40 yes, in the states yes, that's for five and you want to be running 80 of them mm-hmm. so like you know you do all this and then you just get yeah I get it but it's like at the same time like because like people that love cult I'm always going to love cult so I'm going to mm-hmm. play the cult but it's just very unfortunate and sad yeah and honestly to be uh, just to like kind of go with Nico and my point it's like these are the two armies I think from the get go we've been the most passionate about so oh, it's certainly. like whenever stuff anything gets rumored for guard and anything gets rumored for cult we're both like super on top of that and we're just always hoping for the best so it's like we kind of have high hopes for it and I my hopes are I, I enjoy what's in this code, uh, Psychic Awakening book. I wish it was a little more, not from a competitive point, but just kind of opened up the gameplay. But I totally get where Nico's coming from, where it's like... Yeah, it's terrible. Can, yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I legit... Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be like a total negative hater. Some of the strategies are good. Yeah. The Ridge Runner one is pretty good. There's one that makes your Ridge Runners, like, pretty good. Because mm-hmm. it uh, gives them plus one to wound the heavy mining weapon, so they'll mostly be wounding stuff on twos, you know? That's not mm-hmm. bad, but at the same time, they didn't make anything to make Ridge Runners shoot better. Yeah. So, like, you're still, if you miss, it's like, well... No, I totally get it, because okay. it's like you want the custom traits to be something that you would actually consider choosing over the uh, ones that are, like, the specific yes. ones that are made. And obviously, I also... I looked over the Colt one, and it's like, I'm trying to think of combos, because, like, I love the custom traits for all the factions, but it's like, when I look at it, it's just like, why would you ever not take the... They, they don't the synergize right well, for one. Yeah, it's really and, weird. Like, the thing is, like, again, they have 11. Mm-hmm. That's the least amount of any army so far. Mm-hmm. And also, half of them are from the book already. Yeah. So, like, they came up with five that weren't, like, that great. Uh, I'll say right now, I'm probably going to play one game with the custom traits, mm-hmm. and then I'll just go back to... I'll just go back to the... The cults, the, 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 the book, the codex stuff, mm-hmm. because, you know, it's better. And I want to use the psychic powers, yeah, too. Yeah, I know. So it's like, I don't know, man. That's pretty much all I have to say. I hope it wasn't like too negative, but I do know that a lot of people like feel strongly about this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you guys are watching, you do feel strongly about it, feel free to discuss. Yeah. You know what? And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a great game design. Maybe it's just it. There's just something so overpowered there that I just haven't seen, and I'm just done. But I think for the most part, people have been relatively disappointed. You guys, have, you guys just have to realize, Nico is just like. I don't want to say it on camera, but he just doesn't have the IQ to watch Rick and Morty. So I don't. He can't really comprehend I don't. playing an army. You, you like just dumbed down the army for me, GW. Why did you do that? 
<laughs> oh man. Yeah. So uh, there it is. That's pretty much our thoughts yeah. on psychic awakening, the greater good. I guess um, just one question for you before we finish is like overall as a release, because we're how many books in now? Like six. Yeah. Six in. What would what would you rate one through ten on psychic awakening? No. All the psychic awakening. Oh, books. all yeah, the psychic yeah, awakening. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. you meant all the factions in this. Book. No, 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 no. Like as, as a, a whole, because like, we're that's why I said we're six books in. Right. I think we're like about halfway at this point. Yes, I would assume. Yes. The orc one is on the way ne- uh, next, or yeah, the orc one <laughs> yes. is next. Orc one's next, and then the chaos admech whatever stuff. And is nice. Next. So like, as a whole. Yeah. What do you think? Well, that's kind of. I I would need like more like. Mm-hmm. Are you just saying, like, what do I think of all the books, like... Do you like Psychic Awakening? Do you like what they're doing? No. No? No. Because, like, the thing is that it just falls so short with some factions, and it gives others so much more. Okay. So so what do you, what would you rate Psychic Awakening? Because, like, in my opinion, it's just... You can't give it... You can't give some armies so much, and mm-hmm. then give some armies so little. And you can't balance on the tournament scene see that nids have a 30% win rate and then not give them anything to make them like that much better. That's a fair you know? point. That's a fair that's, point. That's what I'm saying. Because it's like, GW's balancing on the tournament scene. Mm-hmm. But like, why are they, why are nids, like why do they give nids that? Like why do they make them like a little better? If you're going to like at least do that. Mm-hmm. But that's just, that's so what do you, what do you think of the releases as a whole? As a whole, I like Psychic Awakening because I like when they actually, I wouldn't say, because I do agree with Nico, it kind of it kind of sucks when like you give some factions, you know, a bar that some other factions do not meet. No. Because I feel like, especially if the if your argument for this is, I don't know, I don't even know if their argument for this was to balance the factions, but it seemed like that's what they were trying to do because they brought up some factions so much, and then they didn't bring up other factions like at all. So yeah, so those are like kind of like what I think of Psychic Awakening. I just think that it's like. If it was like a new release of codexes where like everyone's having fun, mm-hmm. then I would give it a higher score. But the fact is that like some people are not having fun and some people are. Mm-hmm. And I'm one of the people not having fun. So just speaking out for them, I'd give it a four. Mm-hmm. So what would you give it? I am a little more positive on it just because I kind of love the whole campaign thing where they release all this stuff. And I actually do like the speed of the releases. Uh, we're just because... gonna wrap up with our final thoughts on Psychic Awakening, the greater good. So Nico, I'll let you start. Um, it's just most, it's mostly negative. Like that's just like the only way to put it. Cause like, you know, obviously the army that I was most interested in was the one that like got the very short end of the stick. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think just to summarize my thoughts i think you needs to slow down over the releases i think they need to stop balancing off the tournament team like use it if like one unit's like way too good mm-hmm. um but don't like don't base it off losses mm-hmm. and wins and also I, I really don't like how marines have no restrictions on the rules that they're getting mm-hmm. while everybody else does yeah that makes sense that's basically my thoughts of it. i i would honestly I'll, I'll give this psychic awakening two thumbs down <laughs> like it's just i'm not like trying to be like overly negative but like that's just my honest opinion of it. Mm. and are you talking about this book in general or? this book in general okay okay I, I know that like i didn't ask for a rating earlier um for psychic awakening mm-hmm. um what i thought of the entire thing and i think honestly mostly i'd probably do like like a five out of ten maybe a four out of ten mm-hmm. just because I, I think that if everyone was getting new stuff of the same caliber, then it would be good. Mm-hmm. But the fact that some armies are just, like, not getting enough or, like, just just content-wise. Yeah. Just strictly content-wise, um, it, it does not feel good. Yeah, it's weird to see. <laughs> you know, it you see it in the page good. difference for some of the stuff. Yeah, exactly. Really weird, the, so. the cult book, like, the, the cult pages, like, I think there's, like, seven of them? Mm-hmm. And one's a name generator? And, and that's it. Those are all the new rules we got. Well, Guard gets, like, Guard and Tau got so much more. But I, I don't want to go off on that anymore. It's just, it's yeah. two thumbs down for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, yeah. just, that's just how I got to play. It really is only seven, I think. So what what did you think of Psychic Awakening? Uh, so for this one, i give it, okay, Psychic Awakening as a whole, I'd say seven out of ten. Because I do really enjoy that every faction is getting touched, but it kind of hurts me that, like, not all the factions are getting the same amount of content, like right. Nico said. And a lot of stuff has to do with how customizable some things are and some things aren't. So that's it. There you have it. Those are just our thoughts on Psychic Awakening. For me, as a summary, just mostly bad for Dill. Uh, passable, but still pretty sad for mm-hmm. uh, certain people. Yeah. But 
that's just how it goes. So that's pretty much it. That'll wrap up the video. This went on way longer than we wanted it to. <laughs> I know. It, we wanted it to be like 15 minutes and concise. But the thing is, it's not really a review. There's a lot of those out already. Yeah. It's just us, me specifically, being <laughs> frustrated and our thoughts on Psychic Awakening so far. Yeah, it's really just our rants and like what we think. And we just kind of <sighs> keep going and going. Yeah, but, exactly. you know, that's just what we think about it. So Yeah, so again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. If you're watching until now, please don't be afraid to comment. Uh, tell us we're wrong. Uh, agree with us just you know we, we like the community engagement yeah yeah tell so, us your thoughts so please we, we try like... we try to reply to them yeah we do to the audience mostly um and yeah so that's just our feelings on the thing i think that'll pretty much wrap up the video all right cool well again thanks for watching everybody comment like subscribe and get in that comment section you know tell us what you think because we love to talk to everybody like nico said it's just fun and you yeah. know you don't have to agree with us we want to hear yeah. your opinions too it's just a game at the end of the day yeah. i can be upset but it's not gonna kill me <laughs> you never know